Greetings, fellow travelers. Today we will trek through both the Lost Forest Aviary Trail as well as the Owens Aviary. First up on our path is the Aviary Trail. Here we will come across 22 aviaries housing roughly 40 species of birds. I'll put a list of the birds as identified on the signage in the description as some of them are not seen across my visit. This aviary we are seeing was designed specifically for these birds and San Diego Zoo has a successful breeding program for this species. Here we can see the courtship behavior and the keepers rotate the males in with the nesting female just before she lays her egg. In a moment we will spot the magnificent bird of paradise. The male of this species clears the forest floor of leaves to create a display court. These Lori's favorite foods include coconut flowers and ripe mangoes. This species makes its home in the mossy forest of just two mountains. Tragopans are pheasants that nest and roost in trees, and the blyce is the largest of the tragopans. This species is also known as the Great Belly Tragopan. Adult fairy bluebirds mainly eat fruit and figs, but they feed their chicks beetles and termites. This species belongs to a group of birds called the babblers, known for their distinctive melodies. Tricolored parrot finches can often be found nesting at the tops of palm trees. Their diet consists of fruits and grass seeds. Just like most cockatoos, this female male pair of red-tailed black cockatoos have established a strong bond. The male will court the female by feeding her and he will continue to bring food while she incubates her eggs and broods her chicks. Though this species is still in stable condition, forest fires and illegal logging have destroyed much of this bird's habitat. Sometimes referred to as the dwarf hornbill, these birds nest in tree cavities of very large trees. It can be identified with its black body and greenish tint on its tail and back. These pigeons forage on the forest floor for berries, grubs, fallen fruit, and roost in trees at night. A courting male expands his iridescent breast shield and crown feathers. He flicks his cape feathers forward to form a wide oval. Clicking his wings, the transformed male bounces and hops around a female. Females of this species lay a single white egg and incubate it throughout the night. The male takes over incubating during the daytime. No surprise, this parakeet is named for its crest feathers that look like a pair of horns. This bright and colorful songbird does not migrate. It lives high in the forest treetops year-round. The fire tufted barbet gets its name from the fiery red-orange tuft of feathers at the base of its bill. Asian barbettes are related to toucans and woodpeckers. The species is found in the forested mountains of the Malay Peninsula this diet consists of insects, grubs, and fruits. Flocks of these parakeets choose tree cavities near each other for nesting. This bird can be found in the forest of Indochina. These lorries can be found in the wet windward forest of Fiji. These birds can be found from India to Iraq and in a variety of habitats including palm groves and dry woods. These birds are named for a mountain in West Papuan Province, Indonesia, on the island of New Guinea. They eat a wide variety of food, including flower buds, pollen, fruits, and insects. These little parrots fly from island to island to feast on fruit and figs. They inhabit forest, peat swamps, and mangroves, and are known for sometimes hanging upside down when eating or resting.
This species of starlin live in flocks of as many as 150 individuals. They are known to be noisy and make their nest holes in dead wood. A colony can include hundreds of nests. A large bird with a distinctive voice, it brays loudly when near its nesting area. There are 18 species of fruit pigeons in New Guinea, with many living in the same area. They get along by eating fruits of different sizes. Only males of this species have a black nape. Females are more uniformly green. The nest of this bird is a loose platform of twigs and leaves on a palm frond or a slender tree where a female lays a single white egg. Guam kingfishers are beyond endangered. They are extinct in the wild. The species survives only due to breeding programs in U.S. zoos. When non-native brown tree snakes entered Guam, they wiped out the species. Unfortunately, the capture of these birds for the pet trade, combined with destruction of mina habitat by the timber industry and coconut farming, has nearly driven the Baldi mina to extinction in the wild. In 2001, scientists believed only six birds survived. Now, thanks to breeding efforts in the U.S. and Europe, more than 1,000 Baldi minas are in managed care worldwide. Towering at nearly 82 feet, the Owens Aviary is one of the world's largest walk-through aviaries. This aviary was built in 1937 and is home to around 200 tropical birds representing 45 species native to Southeast Asia as well as Australia. Here we begin the second part of our trek through the treetops and wind our way down a path past rocky waterfalls. The first waterfall which falls into a pond full of exotic fish as well as a fly river turtle. The Southeast Asian forest represented here is full of foliage, flowers, and several feeding trays which are located close to the walkway railings, giving us great spots to see these beautiful birds. When birds are introduced to any of the aviaries at the San Diego Zoo, they spend their first days in an acclimation cage or what they call a howdy cage. With this, the resident birds can check out the newcomers through the mesh and the new birds can get a feel for the lay of the land. This helps to minimize stress levels for the new residents. Typically, the birds are not aggressive towards each other. Metallic starlings have a very high-pitched song when communicating. They're also known to mimic the sounds of other neighboring birds. Juveniles are brown with a white patch on their chest and gray coloration on the throat. As they mature, they develop the black color and red eyes. They can be found in flocks consisting of thousands of individuals. These birds live in the forests of Southeast Asia and have powerful legs for walking. Strong flight muscles can get their heavy bodies out of danger. Also known as the common emerald dove, these birds can usually be found searching for fallen fruit on the ground and spend little time in the trees except when roosting. The black collared starling can be found throughout Southeast Asia as well as in southern China. The black throated laughing thrush is a non migratory bird and tends to stay close to where they were born. They make cup shaped nests out of moss, dead leaves, and other materials that are available. Eggs have a glossy blue color and are oval in shape. Their natural habitats include moist lowland forest as well as bamboo woods. This bird is found exclusively in small areas in eastern China. Blue crowned laughing thrushes are a social bird and can live in family groups. Young birds have been known to help their parents feed and raise the latest chicks. Unlike many other cuckoos, this species builds its nest and raises its own young. Males of this species sing varied, repetitive, high-pitched songs 
and females reply with a series of monotonous calls. The collared imperial pigeon inhabits the lowland rainforest and swamp forest of New Guinea and is distinguished by the striking black collar against a white throat. The Nicobar pigeon feeds on the forest floor and spends a great deal of time on the ground. They move about in flocks during the day and roost together at night. Their vocalization is a cooing sound. Like all pigeons and doves, these birds do not sip when drinking, but instead they immerse their bill, sucking up the water. Often seen in high-flying flocks above the forest canopy, these birds can be found in the mountains and foothills of New Guinea. These birds are also known as the Peking Robin, the Hill Robin, and the Chinese Nightingale. This bird species moves in pairs of small flocks through the undergrowth in scrubby areas and open forest and high-altitude areas known for its often piercing, loud, and disjointed sounding whistles. The Victoria crowned pigeon tends to mate for life. The male courts the female by bowing before her, wagging his fan tail, and making booming noises, followed by bringing her sticks. This species builds a stick nest in a tree and lays a single white egg. These birds are not very gregarious, but will form small flocks. This bird inhabits subtropical or tropical dry forest and moist lowland forest of New Guinea. And this will conclude our look at the beautiful birds that call the Lost Forest Aviary Trail and the Owens Aviary home. Thank you for joining me on this trek at the San Diego Zoo. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone.